Hey there friends, Andrew Wilkinson here. Thanks for checking out my channel and welcome back. Um, in this video, we're gonna be talking about popcorn tech and using popcorn as a substrate for growing mycelium. Popcorn is the best substrate and I'll continue to use it until I find a better option, but I doubt that that's gonna happen. And the reason why it's the best is because it's ubiquitous. Popcorn you can find at any grocery store and it's affordable. You can buy it in bulk or those little Orville bags, you know, the, the nerdy guy from the 40s with the glasses and the bow tie. It's, you can find it anywhere, it's cheap, and not only that, there's a better reason. After you colonize your, uh, colonize your grain, popcorn, because of its size, tends to break up more easily. I mean, that's... <laughs> <laughs> that in and of itself. Now, a lot of people have difficulty with popcorn um, because they don't let it hydrate well enough, so they don't have success with it. And I mean, if you don't have success with something, you're not gonna use it again. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to rehydrate popcorn and get amazing yields from your uh, mushroom cultivation projects. So let's get into it. Okay, our first step is gonna to be to prepare our popcorn. We can use any kind of popcorn, doesn't matter if it's white, yellow, blue, um, cattle corn, uh, big, small, doesn't matter, whatever you got, whatever's available, you can use that one. That's gonna, it's gonna work just fine. Um, and before we really start to prepare the popcorn, we wanna do one thing first, um, and that's we wanna get an average weight. Okay, so what you're gonna to wanna to do is count out 10 kernels um, and weigh them in grams. Then divide that number that you get. In this case, we got 1.22. Divide that number by 10. That's the average weight of each individual kernel. Now write that down. Okay, once that's done, we can get the scale out of the way. We're not gonna need it until tomorrow. Okay, the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna add our kernels to our uh, instant pot here. This is a really nice tool if you have it. It's gonna save you a lot of time. It's gonna be really easy. If you don't, that's okay. Use a stock pot just like this on the stove top, that's fine. All right, so add your kernels um, to your stock pot or your instant pot, whatever, whatever you got. Okay, get out of here. And then you're gonna to wanna to add water until it's about three, two to three inches above your uh, popcorn line. This is gonna be, this is gonna be a big batch. All right, so that's as full as it'll uh, allow me to go. Um, yeah, it's gonna be, that's plenty of water. Okay, now what we're gonna do, my friends, is now we're going to heat this up. We wanna heat it up to um, about 170 degrees to 200. We want it to be uh, pasteurized uh, to prevent any bacteria through the rehydrating cycle. And, and when you do this whole thing, remember we're not here to cook the grain, we're here to rehydrate it. So um, whether you're on the, on the stove top, turn up the heat, turn up the, the gas, the electric, uh, and get it up to 170 degrees. If you're using this, you're gonna hit saute and high. And then wait a few minutes, wait till um, you've reached that 170, 200 degree mark, and we'll be back then. All right, so we're back. It's been about 10 minutes, as you can see on the, uh, on the display here. It hasn't even started cooking. It was just um, the preheat factor. So we're gonna check what this is. Make sure that the vent is open so that it doesn't start to pressurize on you and uh, it'll get hard to get stuck on there. So we're gonna mix it up pretty good to redistribute all the heat in here so we get an accurate measurement. And I've got one of these, uh, I've got a Weber. Uh, with cooking thermometer. Uh, I like this thing a lot, I use it, use it often. If you don't have one, I highly recommend getting one. Don't, you shouldn't spend more than 20 bucks. So we're at a temperature of 183 Fahrenheit. That is ample. Uh, so now what I'm gonna do 
is um, if, with the Instant Pot, I'm going to change the setting to yogurt, the yogurt setting, right? Vent low, and we're going to change the time to 16 hours, and hit start. Now you can basically forget about this for uh, the next 16 hours, but usually I'm always curious, so after every four hours, four to eight hours, I'll open this up and I'll check it and it's usually fine. But if I forget about it, it's no problem. And tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon, I'll check this and uh, we'll see you then. However, before I go, if you're using a pot, it's almost just splash that face, I will splash myself. So if you're using a pot, you've, you've probably reached 170, 180 uh, pretty quickly. You get your temperature reading, remove it from heat. Right now you're gonna let that um, in ambient temperature in the kitchen, let that slowly come down to about 100 degrees Fahrenheit or um, body temperature. And once that's happened, once it's at body temperature, you're gonna hit the heat up and let it climb up to about 130, 140 degrees. And again, turn off the heat and let it gracefully fall down to about 100. You're gonna to wanna to check this every four hours or so. Um, overnight, what it's fine. You can just let it cool down to uh, room temperature and then bring the temperature up again in the morning. So that's it for now. This is going to be um, slowly kept, it's gonna be kept warm for the next 16 hours and we'll come back and see you in a bit. Hey guys, it's been about 24 hours and now our mission is to check for the hydration status. We're looking for rehydration of about 70 to 80% uh, increase in weight. So remember that number we talked about just a minute ago uh, that I told you to write down. Our, ours here was 0.123. That was the weight of each kernel. So if you take that number and you multiply it by 1.8, that's going to be an increase in 80%. So we'll do 1.6, that's 60% increase, 0.123. So we're looking for a weight of each kernel of about 0.2 grams. So let's crack this open and we're going to count out uh, 10 kernels. Okay, as you can see here, uh, some of the kernels are cracked. Now we're gonna just, uh, what I'm doing now is I'm rolling them in a paper towel to, to dry off, to remove any extra moisture. We don't want that, that's gonna interfere with our, the accuracy of our reading. My scale is teared, and we're at 2.09 for 10 of them. So we divide that by 10, we're at 0.2 per kernel. Uh, that's just where I wanna be. Uh, uh, for, for a check here, you can, you can do this. Let me get closer. Right, here's the kernel. It sounds like, not Colonel Sanders. All right, and what I'm gonna do is pinch it with my nail. Now, I'm not putting an extraordinary amount of force here, and as you can see, it's split open, it's moist in the center, but not overly wet. It doesn't just turn into uh, like mush. There's still some rigidity here. That's what we want. Okay, so. We are, uh, we happen to be good. We're gonna drain these. If your kernels are still hard, um, or it's not, it hasn't reached that 60 to 80% increase in volume, um, make sure that you pasteurize it again, lift the temperature up to 170, and let it cool down on its own. Uh, check, check in about an hour or so. Uh, once you ramp up the heat again, you might see an, a complete inflation of these kernels and you might be just ready to go then. So now what we're gonna do is we're ready. So let's drain this water and get them dried off. Okay, I'm gonna clean up my workspace here and I'll be back in just a second. For this step, I'm gonna be using a, uh, a sifter here. This is, I don't know, people use this to like find gold or whatever. Uh, you don't need one of these, you can use a regular a colander, uh, whatever you've got to just drain the water, spaghetti strainer, 
whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, that might be hot, I'm gonna touch that. Uh, so we're gonna use this, and I'm gonna pour right into here so that uh, this is just a, like a bus bin. I'm gonna pour into here so that I can stay on camera, it's nice and easy. You just pour it into the sink, it's fine. All right, it all fits in here. It's mostly drained, but I'm gonna let this sit like this for another five minutes or so. So this is gonna set aside. I've got that there. I'm gonna pour this into the sink and I'll see you in five minutes. Okay, so it's, it's drip dried now, so there's still some moisture on here and uh, it's the moisture on the outside, the surface of these kernels uh, that we don't want. We want the, the outsides to be dry and the insides to be uh, moist. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate these out uh, into a single layer of kernels. So I may actually need a third tray. Um, let me angle this down. You won't see my head for a minute, but that's all right. That's not what you're here for. You're not here to see my head. You're here to see the uh, corn. Right, you can see the and the, the reason this works is because you're increasing surface area. Right, so you want all that steam. That steam is the enemy. Steam, rise, my son, rise. All right, so here uh, we get we can add some more corn to this tray. Look, it's, it's beautiful. All right. Uh, so this is going to go into, where do I get down here? Uh, so these two trays are going to go into a separate room um, where they're just going to evaporate, right? They're going to cool down right now. They're still hot. They're warm to the touch. Um, the water's going to evaporate every 10 minutes or so. I'm going to go in and I'm going to uh, ruffle the feathers and kind of expose different surfaces of these kernels to the air so that those uh, dry as well. That's it. Now we're going to be uh, I'll see you in maybe this might take a half hour or so uh, it Depends on the humidity of your room the warmth of your room. There's a lot of factors uh, So just pause the video and when you're done uh, we can do it together All right, it's been about 20 minutes and these are just about ready to go. You can tell, it seems obvious, but um, when you touch them, your, your hands don't become overly wet. There's some moisture there, that's okay. Um, in, uh, we've got the bus bin again. Uh, I've got some paper towel in here. And just gonna, I'm gonna pour these in. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that with these and then I'll be back. Right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna massage the corn. <laughs> now I'm gonna take this paper towel and uh, work through the corn and it should still be dry at the end of it, right? So here we go. Uh, we're, we are ready. I'm gonna remove this paper towel that's at the bottom here. There you go, that one had a little bit of moisture. Here we go. So that's sufficiently dry. Now, I'm going to add um, lime and calcium sulfate. It's basically like, um, uh, kind of like chalk. And what the lime is gonna do is it's gonna increase the pH of the substrate. Um, and the calcium sulfate, what that's gonna do is it's gonna keep the kernels from um, adhering to each other. Um, the kernels are pretty big. You could probably get away with not using that at all um, and have it not break up on you, not uh, agglutinate. Uh, but I like to add it anyway. It's easy. I have it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I have it calculated out by weight. I do uh, two grams per four. No, let me see. I've it written down. I always forget, so I gotta write it down. Uh, it's two grams per 400 grams, so a half of a gram per 100 grams 
of substrate. So I'm gonna get this bowl here. Grams, that's right. Well, uh-oh, this could be this could be a mess. It's gonna work. There's kernels everywhere. My wife just cleaned yesterday. Okay, 3763. So I'm gonna write that down. Okay, there we have it. We can go back in here. That bowl did its job. Now, I've got a small bowl. I'm gonna tear that. Now we're gonna weigh out our lime and our calcium sulfate. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna divide that number by 400 because that's what my equation is here, 400 grams. That gives me 9.4. Now I'm gonna multiply that by two. So now it tells me I need 18.8 grams of each one of these for my entire batch. So that's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna weigh it out and I'll be back in a second. Calcium carbonate is done, I'm gonna get this out of the way. Next I have a spice grinder because the lime that I purchased is in uh, granules. So again, 18.8 grams. Spice grinder works pretty well for this, not perfect, but it'll get the job done. Don't breathe this. Jesus. All right, I'm gonna mix this up here. I'll just do it. All right. And there we have it. it. This is basically, this is ready for jars or bags and then ready for the pressure cooker. So I'm gonna bag this up and I'll be back in a second. All right, I may or, I may, or may not use, use this footage, uh, but I'll do it anyway. So I usually aim for about two thirds full. Uh, then I just put a cap on it, a cover. Now I ended up buying these green lids here uh, they were very expensive on Amazon. They work okay, but the this just like, pops off. It pops off very easily. It hasn't led to a disaster for me yet. Yet. Again, I'm, I'm shooting for three jars today. That should give me plenty. Um, these I made on my own, and I'm biased, of course, but I like them a lot better. Because I use some... Uh, high heat epoxy to wedge these in here. And these cat you've probably seen them on the internet. You definitely look into how to make them on your own. It's it's easy and it's actually it's a fun project, you know? You, I mean, I'm assuming you like projects, that's why you're watching this one. Oh. And this one this one's damaged. Left it in the pressure cooker without any water. It actually ruined my pressure cooker. That was a mistake. Uh, lid's good though. Goes to it's a testament to how great that thing is. There we go. Um, and then the rest, I'm gonna load into a bag. All right, there we go. Let's go get clean. Okay, there we have it, my friends. That's that's how to do uh, corn popcorn tech. Um, we've got our bags here. These are ready for the sterilizer. Uh, and these are some examples of uh, how, it, how it will look in a, uh, in a few weeks. This is my pink oyster. Uh, and this is my blue oyster, which just started to uh, fruit now, or it should be fruiting very soon. You can see the, the, the pre-stages. Usually I'll just like do a cut down the uh, the center of the the bag here, but in this case, it started fruiting at the top, and I want to uh, I want to catch that so it doesn't mess up with anything and get stuck in the bag and start to rot or get inhibited. Uh, oyster mushrooms like a lot of oxygen, 
So in this case, I want them out of the bag and into the air. Um, so that's it, my friends. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to comment uh, in the section below. Um, I love all your comments. You guys have been super supportive. Um, and I'll stop rambling. Thanks for watching. Please like if you want to help this channel, like this video. Uh, hit the notification bell if you want to see more videos like this. Um, and pretty soon, these will be ready. So if you want to see uh, some cooking videos on the best way to use pink and blue oyster mushrooms, those will be coming up pretty, pretty soon. Great in omelets. And there's a really nice port wine uh, mushroom sauce that I think you guys are going to like too. So I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks again. I'm Andrew, and this is Of Mice and Mycelium.